We are on the line this morning with Christine Miles, uh, who is uh, in Mexico, but from Philly. Get get all this, okay? She's in Mexico, uh, trying to make me jealous by saying that she's looking at the ocean. Uh, she's from Philly. She played college field hockey for Millersville. She's been here to Indiana, losing to the Crimson Hawks a lot in her lifetime. Christine, how did you do against IUP down through the years? Well, we did pretty well. We were we were the top um, up until three years ago. We were the most winning uh, team in Millersville field hockey history. So Ooh. I don't want to I don't want to make your listeners uh, not like me because <laughs> I enjoyed my trip there. But we did pretty well. But I will say I remember the field well. Oh yeah. And I remember the players being you know they weren't they, it was a battle. It was always a battle on the field. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fun. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. My goodness gracious. Our conversation with Christine is brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Christine is the author of a book called What Is It Costing You Not to Listen? And the subtext of it all is uh, how come we're always shouting at each other? Christine, what's all the yelling about in today's world? Yeah, well, it's interesting. You started with your sponsor because I was in an accident when I was 30 that took me out of my sports playing days, and that's when I really really started to dive into solving this problem because once you're injured and you're on your whole body changes you you start to realize people have a hard time empathizing with what they can't see because mm-hmm. i had an injury that wasn't noticeable mm-hmm. and i think um you know we're just not taught that's that's the first problem we're told to listen but not taught how we are um fewer years of education on listening from elementary school through college and then we get into corporate america if, if we take that path and two percent of people have had any kind of listening training so we're unprepared for the world that we're living in right now because we're, we're taught how to tell, talk, and know, which is what's happening. We're doing a lot of telling, a lot of talking, and a lot of knowing, and not much listening. The conversation, the art of conversation has gone away, hasn't it? I, I, I'm an optimist, and I believe in humans, and I think we just have to reorient ourselves. Like It's like the food paradigm, right? At one time, we thought that we were supposed to eat no fat and, and high carbs, but we've learned better, right? <laughs> we know better now. So I just think we have to change the paradigm of communication. We're focused on it's, it's overused. We do need to be able to tell, talk, and know, but listening is the most powerful form of communication. I think if we put our time and energy there for a while, it'll, right. it'll start to shift things in a, in a much more powerful way. It's so much easier, Christine, though, to just try to talk because what, what's happening is you're talking and, and I'm getting ready to talk and, and say what I want to say, and, and I'm not really listening to what you have to say because I'm formulating what I want to say. It's all about me, Christine. <laughs> well, it, it is, isn't it? Um, but, and we all, look, I've, we're all thirsting to be understood. That's where this is coming from. It's not, it's not just because... It, when things aren't about us enough, sometimes that's when we need it to be about us the most. And so we've all been, we've, what we have in common is we've been through a lot. And the pandemic, we've all suffered to some degree. Mm-hmm. We've lost control of our lives because we can't do what we think is normal and we're able to do. And it's, it, we're thirsty to be understood. So the gift is if we give that, we're more likely to get that. And, and it is a human it's a very human thing to do. It's, I call it the gift of understanding. And you get more than you receive when you approach things that way. But we have to think about what, what's the result we want. Do we want our marriages to be better? Do we want our relationships with our kids to be better? Do we want to, do we want to have a better day? Because it's, it's hard to be that frustrated and angry with people and, and not feel it all day long. And we're the ones paying the price. Yeah, yeah, you're right. When we're all talking at the same time, a lot of people think that the solution is just talk louder. Uh, if if mm-hmm. I talk louder, maybe my voice will be heard over the din, and, and in truth, nobody's voice is being heard. So what are the solutions? How do we approach this? Well, I appreciate that as well, because, look, this is this is simple but not easy, like anything. It, you know, the tools are there. I, we've built the system. I, I started listening when I was five, so I've I've, I reverse engineered it. You know, I, mine came out of necessity. I had a mom who had pain below the surface from losses she had early in her life, and it was my job to understand that. And one of the things I was raised to do is ask a very important question, probably the most powerful question you can ask, which is how does that make you feel? Mm-hmm. When we tap into that versus what do you know, how are you doing, a whole other world opens up. And, and that's the beginning of a different kind of co- the art of conversation, as you said. 
Yeah. How do we get to a different paradigm in what we're talking about? When we ask about our feelings and the feelings of others, you start to know the human. It's a lot harder to shout. Like, you wouldn't shout at somebody if you knew that their kid was just hospitalized with cancer. You probably wouldn't do that mm -hmm. because you know their story. When you don't know the story, it's really easy to yell. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. It's interesting. You know, when people uh, say to me something along the line, and it's just a throwaway line, they say, what do you know? I I often say, I know nothing. I've got plenty of people willing to tell me that. Uh, and, and that really is the case uh, with a lot of people. Uh, we don't give each other the respect that we deserve, the dignity that we deserve. Uh, and, and that's what the art of conversation is. It's, it's, it's the understanding and the realization. It really is a two-way thing, isn't it? It, it is. It's a, I, I describe it in, in my book, What Is It Costing You Not to Listen? It's a shared journey, right? You as the listener are the guide in the conversation. How do you guide the person how, to mutual understanding? It's a responsibility in the conversation. And when you take that, you really create something very special and meaningful. People will come to you. They'll opt in with you. It doesn't work to tell people what to do. I, I was a therapist in my first career, and I... You know, people would say, hey, what, do you, what should I do? And I saw hook, line, and sinker uh, and tell them what to do. And they were like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, well, you just asked me to tell you because mm. it's human nature to resist that. That's not how we convince people of anything. We convince people by understanding them first and then earning the right to perhaps tell them or advise them or help them solve their problem. That's true in marriages, uh, relationships with our kids, our customers, selling. It's across the board. Um, we have to do that first, understand first. Christine Miles is our guest. Uh, she's the author of the book, What Is It Costing You Not to Listen? Christine, tell me about the journey to writing the book, um, not the journey of writing the book. That, that What made you decide that this is something I want to tackle, put down on paper, and help people in that way? Well, this has been my career's work, my life's work, and my belief is that it, listening differently is the single threat to any success I've had in any arena that I've, including the sports field. Uh, and what I, I knew is when the pandemic hit that people were going to be in a different place. It, this feels like a nice to have too often versus a need to have. And I thought if I don't, if I don't capture this moment now and help create, I, I really wanted to create a mission, a, a, a movement around let's make listening the most powerful form of communication. Let's shift this because we're, we're in trouble. So how do we do that? So I really wanted to get the message out as quickly as possible to say, look, it's time. Let's, let's shift this. And, and so you began this journey. Did the book turn out the way that you thought it was going to? Did it take you in the, in the places that you thought it would? It, uh, it, was, it was a very, you know, putting, I, I actually started writing it in Mexico in May. I wrote the book in two weeks. It kind of poured out of me because I had been thinking and formulating this for so long. So it, it, it was really, I, and I'm all, I, I believe I'm, I'm a very good listener. I know that. But I even became better through writing it because when you have to, that's the definition of emotional intelligence, right? Being able to put language around things. So I even, even honed in more to that language. And it, it, was, it was a very meaningful, and, and the response to it has been really um, quite, quite profound, the feedback I've gotten. So I'm appreciative of that because this is a gift. Like, understanding is a gift. I've known that for a long time. It, it helps us heal our own wounds, including my own. And so the idea that giving gets you more than taking is really, it's, it's powerful. So I, I hope that this message helps people let their marriages be better, their relationships with their kids, their neighbors, like I said, anybody. You can practice listening with anyone, and you make the world a better place. That's, that's really the larger movement and mission here. I would guess that you have had some uh, real success stories just in finding people who have put these techniques uh, to work and who have made the actual decision, because that's really where it begins, is the actual decision that I'm going to become a better listener. Um, when people do that, I'm, I'm sure you hear the stories all the time of uh, how their lives change and, and how their abilities to communicate with each other do, too. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy. We, we, we solve business problems largely at Equip at the company. Uh, and, you know, we want to make people more successful in their business lives, but we have to start with how they do this personally. Just about a month and a half ago, we had a senior account executive at a large pharmaceutical company. Day one of the workshop, came back day two after applying just, just one of the tools and said, 
I got an unelicited hug from my 16-year-old daughter for the first time in three years. <laughs> and he started to cry. And, I, and this was after one day and one tool that he implemented. He said, I don't know how to thank you. That's what I mean. We, we, if we only knew how, people want to do it. They don't know how. So when they are enabled with the how, the world opens up and then things start to change and personal results happen, business results happen, and then life, it really gets fun. So even in the terms of the shouting, like, what's the goal? Do, you don't feel, nobody feels good after they shout. It's just, it's just venom and anger, right? Mm-hmm. When, we, when we really understand first, we, we feel better about who we are and how we, what we bring out in people. So we have to be focused on those results to get there. The book is called What Is It Costing You Not to Listen? Christine Miles has been our guest here this morning on Indiana in the Morning. Where are we going to learn more about the book and where are we going to learn more about your company, Equipped? I appreciate that. You can go to what is it costing you not to listen dot com or Amazon Barnes and Noble for the book. And the my website is equipped. That's E Q U I P T T as in Tom dash people dot com. We equip people with the human skills, helping them number one problem is overcoming what it costs not to listen. All right, beautiful. Christine Miles, thanks for spending so much time with us. Enjoy Mexico, okay? I appreciate that, and I wish I wish you some time away. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Have a great day today. You too. Thanks so much. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 116, FM and AM 116.